give me a black female protagonist, her predominantly white, peaceful hometown, the unraveling of this small town's darkest secrets, and this genre-bending thriller, mystery, horror novel will leave you questioning the history of an area's demographics while equally fearing the origins of urban legends. The Books and Vogue Podcast Come get your favorite next book The Books and Vogue Podcast With Catch and Brad Welcome, book lovers, to the Books on Vogue podcast. This is your premier listening experience all about immersive reading and helping avid and reluctant readers alike reimagine book characters like never before. I'm your host, Scott Trinidad. The format of the show is I introduce the book, share tips on how you can engage your senses as you read this title, because it's one thing to be a mood reader, but you get a little something extra from the story when you are set the mood reader. And finally, I will end the show with a reimagining of my favorite scene. Today, we will discuss techniques for getting into Jackal with none other than the author, Aaron E. Adams. Welcome, Aaron. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Please tell us about the book. So Jackal follows Liz, a young black woman who goes back to her hometown in the Rust Belt. She has not been to her hometown for many, many years, for many, many very good reasons, but she is there for her best friend, Melissa's wedding. So at that wedding, Melissa's young daughter, Caroline, vanishes. There's this massive search started, and as everything starts to come to light, Liz realizes that there have been uh, a lot of missing children in the woods around her town, and they are all Black, and they're all girls. And so they've been kind of going under the radar for years and years and years, and now she has to get to the bottom of it once and for all before it is too late for Caroline and possibly too late for her. Thank you so much for that, Erin. I read the book and I loved it. And I hope our book lovers love it as well. Well, while I have you here, do you care to join me in a discussion of some tips for setting the reading mood? Oh, I would love to. Okay, book lovers. I hope you have your writing utensils ready because class is in session. Hear it, see it, smell it, sense it, taste it, touch it, ah. Hear it, see it, smell it, sense it, taste it, touch it, ah. Hear it, see it, smell it, sense it, taste it, touch it. The Books and Bone Podcast. So, Erin, what is the vibe? How can we engage our spirit as we read this book? So the vibe is definitely uh, spooky. I know spooky season is right around the corner and this will get you right in that mood. Um, It's eerie. It's definitely a book that you read late at night, but with all of the lights on. I can see that. I can see that. (laughs) (laughs) So, so what is the sound of a jackal? What key notes in music or nature can set the tone as we read this novel? I would say that Jackal sounds like a a very quiet moment in the forest or um, a late night drive when the Spotify or whatever have you just kind of shuffles things around through time and genres. And then if I had to pick a genre for music, a, a lot of this book came from listening to the catalog of Valerie June and Mariba. Okay, okay. So do share the aesthetics. How can any visuals aside from a book, you know, I know you mentioned lighting, but are there anything else or is there anything else that could add to the aesthetics? Uh, I would say when it comes to visuals, this is one of my favorite scriptures for a time of day. Uh, It's not just dusk, but it is the time between dog and wolf, where at first glance, when something is approaching you on the horizon, it's just dark enough that you can't tell if what's walking towards you is friend or foe. 
That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but very appropriate. <laughs> what is the flavor? Any food or drink companions for this title? Ooh, a your deepest, most complicated red wine. Um, and a Pennsylvania gob, which uh, I've realized I've had to explain since moving to New York what a gob is. It is like this... Uh, cake like cookie sandwich thing that has two usually chocolate two chocolate cookie cakes and then um really dense homemade uh cream in the middle uh and they're just dense and delicious and they're the kind of um i'd recommend for the flavor it's also a mouthfeel of anything that kind of sticks to the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth okay okay um what is the aroma are there any smells that would transport us into the pages? Mm, yes, I am I'm a big I'm a big fan of these smells. Uh, maybe not the last one, but I would say uh, any sort of like of those amber smells, uh, skin musks, uh, trees, all sorts of like fresh tree scents. Um, that scent that comes right after it rains and mix it all together and then throw just the sharp, just a slight sharp hint of something burning very far away. Okay. Okay. And finally, how can we get more of the feels? Oh, Jackal definitely feels, it feels like a long summer night where you've been awake for like maybe two hours past your bedtime and it's just as hot at night as it is during the day. And it also can feel like, it feels like a well-furnished home, but with one thing out of place. You don't know what that thing is. Nice, nice. Well, there you go, book lovers. <laughs> These are your recommended supplies as you read this title. <laughs> if you're able, pause and get some of these if available or simply imagine because it's time for my favorite scene. Disclaimer, please note the exact words, names, locations, and or scenarios mentioned in this reimagined reenactment may differ from the actual book. Sharing my favorite scenes, I reenacted those. Imagining the fiction world that I've been reading of. Oh. Going from all the things, I just gave you a list. Come experience all the senses as protagonists. Oh. And it don't get more real than this. Immerse it, read books on both and live vicariously. Homecoming, starring Aaron E. Adams as Melissa Parker, a.k.a. Mel, and Kat Trinidad as Elizabeth Roche, a.k.a. Liz. How does she always know exactly when to call? <laughs> hey, Mel. You're here. I am. So, how does it feel to be home? My home is dead. Liz, stop being so damn dramatic. It's one weekend. Fine. Let it be known. I buried this place when I look at a map of the United States. My eyes drip over 309 miles of a state that isn't quite the heartland or the coast. As I stand in this Appalachian intercoastal up America, I find myself in a liminal expanse of cruel riddle. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that hello? Can I get a weekend for my wedding, please? You get exactly 48 hours, no more, no less. Hey, conductor, wait. Funfetti for a wedding cake. It's interesting, right? It's all they had at the store. The bakery couldn't rush the order for us, so I'm currently on layer three of a five layer cake. My God, this place is remote. That's just the station. Listen, Garrett just sent me a picture of the view at the venue. It's absolutely stunning. 
glad you finally decided on a place the day before the ceremony. Where is it? Oh, we're using Nick's place. Like his house? His land. It's picturesque. And where exactly is this land? It's uh, the woods. We're, we're in the woods. Okay. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, no. You must be kidding. Elizabeth Roche, please tell me you're going to be cool about this. What? What do you mean cool? How is this cool? I, I don't know. We were going to go and grab a ball at the Holiday Inn, but they're closed for the weekend because of the pipe burst. And then we we're going to do it in the yard, but then Nick offered and it's beautiful, Liz. It's just beautiful. I understand, but I... Please don't tell me you're going to run. I didn't. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. Liz, please. You, Liz, are so lucky. Thank you. So lucky. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to give you a heads up. What? It's, um, me. Yes, me, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. It, that's okay. It won't mess up the head count or. No, no, I don't want that asshole here. I want you. Thanks. I need you here. Believe me. You okay? Uh, I'm fine. No, you sound. I sound what? Um, stressed. Did, did you hear that? What? Liz? You sound far away. Liz, you still there? Yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm here, Mel. Alright. I'll see you tomorrow. Book lovers. If you have enjoyed this sneak peek, you can get more by reading the whole book. Jackal is available at your local library and everywhere books are sold. The paperback would be out September 5th and now is a great time to pre-order and request it because you deserve to read all the books that interest you. And if you have already read Jackal or are in the middle of reading it, let me know in the comments what you like to do to set the reading mood because I would love to hear from you. So please leave your feedback. Erin, is there anything else you would like to share with the listeners? Uh, yes, I have a couple of exciting, fun uh, things coming up. Uh, first off, the paperback for Jackal is coming out on September 5th. And then on October 3rd of this year, I have a short story out in the Black Horror Collection that's been curated by none other than me, Jordan Peele. It's called Out There Screaming. It's October 3rd of this year. Then I have another short story in a uh, young adult Black horror collection that's called The Black Girl Survives in this one very timely title. That is out, uh, that's out April 4th of 2024. And then finally, last but definitely not least, my second novel, One of You, is out April 23rd of 2024. It deals with sisterhood, Haitian folklore, and the dream slash nightmare of America. Wow, that all sounds very exciting. Again, thank you, Erin, for joining us today. And thank you, book lovers, for listening. With peace, love, and joy. Happy reading. The Books and Vogue Podcast. Come get your favorite next book. The Books and Folk Podcast With Catchin' Brad Subscribe, listen, check out recommendations And happy reading <laughs>